treatment of sacroiliac joint dysfunction. The sacroiliac joint is involved in about 22% of patients with low back pain. The treatment of sacroiliac joint dysfunction can be challenging. The pain and dysfunction of the sacroiliac joint is underdiagnosed. The pain pattern can overlap with spine and hip conditions that will definitely throw off the physicians. It is also difficult to diagnose by physical examination alone and by x-rays. Doctors may not think about the sacroiliac joint as a pain generator in case of low back pain. The doctors may not know about sacroiliac joint dysfunction. They don't see it enough or they don't treat it enough. The patient will see multiple healthcare providers, get multiple diagnoses, and many imaging studies, including MRIs. And the MRI itself can add to the confusion because of its false positives result when it comes to assessment of the intervertebral disc. The sacroiliac joint diagnosis can only be confirmed with an injection, which should be done fluoroscopically or by ultrasound. The healthcare provider that's doing the examination probably does not know how to do the injection. The majority of the doctors are not trained to do the injection. It's not like simple blind knee injection. Patients that are experiencing low back pain can spend months or even years in treatment without the correct diagnosis. In low back pain, the doctors automatically link the back pain to disc conditions, even if there are no neurological findings. Why is that? Because the MRI is falsely showing protruding discs that is present in a lot of asymptomatic people. Sometimes the pain itself can look like discogenic or radicular low back pain. There is no typical clinical history, physical examination, or imaging studies that helps the clinician in making a reliable diagnosis of sacroiliac joint dysfunction. On the other hand, a successful clinical outcome of the sacroiliac joint treatment will depend on identifying the primary source of the pain. So the correct diagnosis is important. The quality of life of patients with SI joint pain is worse than that of patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and is equivalent to patients with hip and knee arthritis. So how do we make the diagnosis? By the patient history, by a positive 14 finger test, the patient pointing their finger and the pain is below L5, and by having three or more positive provocative tests, including thigh thrust and compression test. The patient history and the patient description and location of the symptoms is important. The pain is not at the midline. It is to the side and below the L5 level. The provocative clinical tests are helpful in diagnosing the sacroiliac joint pain, but individually they are not as reliable as the response to a diagnostic sacroiliac joint injection. All these evaluations will point us towards the sacroiliac joint etiology then we confirm it by an injection. Evaluation of the patient for leg length discrepancy and evaluation of the patient for scoliosis and examination of the patient's gait. Also, don't forget to examine the patient neurologically, including the motor, the sensory, and the reflexes. And examine the hip in addition to straight leg graze test, which is used to diagnose radiculopathy due to herniated disc. And it is usually negative in sacroiliac joint problems. 
75% or more acute relief of pain from the injection is diagnostic of sacroiliac joint at the source of pain. We usually treat the patient conservatively first for four weeks before we do the sacroiliac joint injection. If the condition is chronic and the patient has no diagnosis, and if the pain is severe, I will do injection early with steroids for the purpose of diagnostic and therapeutic. What is the main goal of the treatment? Is to try to decrease the pain, improve the function, improve the posture, and the lower spine and the hip mechanics. Usually we use multiple modalities. We can use anti-inflammatory medications, antidepressants for short term, lidocaine patches. We can use bracing for a short period. So the pelvic belt will decrease the shear forces and stress across the joint. It will limit the movement and provide relief and is more helpful during pregnancy. The brace is worn at or above the greater trochanter, and it can decrease the motion of the sacroiliac joint by about 30%. In general, we treat the patient with anti-inflammatory medication, with pelvic belt, and physiotherapy. And if that doesn't work for a few weeks, you go for injection. If you get the result of 75% relief from the injection, then you know that the sacroiliac joint is the main source of the pain. Physical therapy. The therapy will increase the flexibility, the proprioception, and it will strengthen the core muscles in the pelvic region. Therapy can also include joint manipulation and joint mobilization. Injection, usually local anesthetic and steroids, we limit the injection to three injections in six months and four in one year. Success rate in three months, 62%. In six months, about 58%. Two-thirds of the patients has more than 50% pain reduction for six weeks. In patients with lower lumbar spine fusion, injection is not as good. For the result of the injection, check the patient immediately after the injection or in a day or two, not at six weeks when they come to the clinic and then they tell you it did not work. You want to know if the injection worked as a diagnostic injection. Then you have a diagnosis and sacroiliac joint fusion can be considered in the future. You also want to know if it worked as a therapeutic, and if it did, then you repeat the injection in two months. Without imaging, a blind injection is in the SI joint only 22% of the time. With more research done in the area of injection, a blind injection may have a role, but for now is not the standard. The question of periarticular versus intraarticular injections. Which one is more effective? And the exact location, which part of the SI joint you should give the injection? Do you inject in the upper part, the middle part, or the lower part of the joint? When using an ultrasound in an overweight patient, what is the best position for injection? Is it when the patient lying down or the patient is standing and bending over? Prolotherapy can be considered so as radiofrequency ablation, which interrupts and disrupts the sensory innervation to the sacroiliac joint with the hope it provides longer pain relief than the injection. The radiofrequency ablation targets the lateral branches of the sacral nerve roots. The sacroiliac joint innervation is complex. The radiofrequency ablation cannot denervate the anterior neural structures to the sacroiliac joint. And the denervated posterior sensory sacral nerve roots regenerate within several months. 
Surgery is indicated in patients with positive response to the sacroiliac joint injection with more than 75% relief. It is done in a patient with continued or recurrent sacroiliac joint pain despite adequate conservative treatment. Percutaneous arthrodesis is safer, better than the open technique which is used for revision surgery for non-union and if the patient has an unusual anatomy. Fusion has a better outcome compared to conservative management when the primary pain generator is the sacroiliac joint. The minimally invasive technique is an outpatient surgery with smaller incisions. The triangular implant will stabilize the sacroiliac joint and will prevent motion and rotation. The triangular titanium porous coated implants are the most commonly used implants and the bone grows into the implant creating a fusion. Usually you insert three implants. The pseudoarthrosis, which means non-union, is about 5%. And when you do revision, you probably have to do an open technique. Studies show that at one year, the CT scan shows more than 95% of bone integration into the implant on both the iliac side and the sacral side. What happens when you fuse the joint? Would the patient notice any problem? The sacroiliac joint has very little motion, so the patient would not notice much of a problem from the sacroiliac joint fusion. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.